In this video, we're overclocking the Intel Core Ultra 5 245K all the way up to 5,633 megahertz using the ROG Strix Z890i gaming motherboard and Enermax AIO cooling. I'll speed run you through the BIOS settings and provide some notes and tips along the way. Please note that this is for entertainment purposes only and not the whole picture. Don't just outright copy these settings and apply them to your system. Have a look at the longer Scatterbanger video that's already up on this channel if you want to know how to overclock this kind of a system. All right, let's get started. When you've entered the BIOS, switch to the advanced mode view and go to the AI tweaker menu. Set performance preferences to ASUS advanced OC profile. This sets a number of BIOS options that help with overclocking including some that override Intel's default parameters. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP1. This lets us rely on the Intel Extreme Memory Profile 3.0 technology and will make our G-Scale DDR5 memory run at its rated speed of DDR5-7800. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. This unleashes the Turbo Boost 2.0 power limits and lets the CPU run at unlimited power indefinitely. Set performance core ratio to by core usage. This enables us to configure a dynamic P core overclock as we can define the maximum allowed P core ratio for a specified number of active P cores. Set one core and two core ratio limit to 57. Set three core to six core ratio limit to 56. Enter the specific performance core submenu. Here we can define a maximum allowed ratio for each P core individually and configure the DLVR adaptive voltage that is mapped to that specific ratio. Set performance core 0 and core 1 specific ratio limit to 55.33. Set performance core 2 and core 3 specific ratio limit to 56.33. Set performance core 4 and 5 specific ratio limit to 53. Set performance core 0 to core 5 specific voltage to adaptive mode. Set additional turbo mode CPU P core 0 and P core 1 voltage to 1.4. Set additional turbo mode CPU P core 2 and P core 3 voltage to 1.45. Set additional turbo mode CPU P core 4 and P core 5 voltage to 1.2. Leave the specific performance core submenu. Set efficient core ratio to by core usage. This enables us to configure a dynamic E core overclock as we can define the maximum allowed E core ratio for a specified number of active E cores. Set efficient 1 core to 5 core ratio limit to 51. Set efficient 6 core to 8 core ratio limit to 50. Enter the specific efficient core submenu. Here we can define a maximum allowed ratio for each E-Core cluster, consisting of four E-Cores individually, and configure the DLVR adaptive voltage that maps to the specified ratio. Set efficient core group 0 and group 1 specific ratio limit to 51. Set efficient core group 0 and group 1 specific voltage to adaptive mode. Set additional turbo mode CPU efficient core group 0 and group 1 voltage to 1.4. Leave the specific efficient core submenu. Set DRAM frequency to DDR5-7600. I had to do this because this particular kit was not stable at the rated XMP7800 frequency. Note that we still rely on the XMP timings and voltages even though we've reduced the frequency. Enter the Digi plus VRM submenu. Set CPU load line calibration to level 6. This configures the load line for the VCC IA voltage rail which powers all the compute tile DLVRs, including the P-cores, the E-core clusters and the ring. I manually set a relatively flat load line because I want the input power to be relatively stable across all workloads. Leave the Digi Plus VRM submenu. Enter the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Set TVB voltage optimizations to disabled. This prevents the CPU from automatically reducing the operating voltage when the CPU is operating at a lower temperature. Leave the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Enter the Max Voltage Limits submenu. Intel has imposed strict voltage limits for their CPUs for the very first time. 
By default, the voltage limit is plus 200 millivolt over the default maximum VID. We can increase this to plus 300 millivolt. For my CPU, that yields a new voltage limit of 1.45 volt for the P cores and 1.4 volt for the E cores. Set P core max voltage limits to 1.45. Set E core max voltage limits to 1.4. Leave the max voltage limits submenu. Enter the performance core VF point offset submenu. Here we want to set all P core VF point offsets to zero. Set VF point present mode to all core mode. Set VF point voltage control mode to manual mode. Leave the performance core VF point offset submenu. Enter the efficient core VF point offset submenu. Here we want to set all E core VF point offsets to zero. Set VF point present mode to all core mode. Set VF point voltage control mode to manual mode. Leave the efficient core VF point offset submenu. Enter the tweakers paradise submenu. Set high D2D cold boot workaround to enabled. This helps fix some booting issues when the CPU D2D is overclocked. Leave the tweakers paradise submenu. Set max CPU cache ratio to 44. That increases the ring frequency by 600 megahertz from the default 3.8 gigahertz. Set NGU ratio to 32. That increases the NGU frequency by 600 megahertz from the default 2.6 gigahertz. Set CPU D2D ratio to 36. That increases the CPU D2D frequency by 1.5 gigahertz from the default of 2.1 gigahertz. Set actual VRM core input voltage to manual mode. Set CPU core voltage override to 1.525. Set ring DLVR voltage to adaptive mode. That enables us to set an adaptive voltage map to the ring's OC ratio, which is defined by the ring maximum ratio. That means the ring has an adjusted VF curve that goes up to the set adaptive voltage and specified ring ratio. Set additional turbo mode voltage to 1.3. Set CPU system agent voltage to manual mode. This dynamic voltage rail powers several parts of the SOC dialet, including the NGU, IMC and NPU. By setting it to manual mode, we can set a static output voltage from the voltage regulator. Set CPU system agent voltage override to 1.3. Set VNN AON 0.77 volt voltage to manual mode. This static voltage rail powers several internal voltages, including the D2D interfaces. Set VNN AON voltage override to 1. Then save and exit the BIOS. We rerun some benchmarks to ensure everything works as intended and check the performance increase compared to the default settings. Higher is better, and all of our benchmark scores are higher. When running the OCCT CPU SSE stability test, the average CPU P core effective clock is 5471 MHz with 1.353 volts, and the average CPU E core effective clock is 4989 MHz with 1.333 volts. The average CPU temperature is 97 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 264.1 watts. And that's it. I thank you for watching and the patrons for the support and see you next time.